categories of injuries that, that injured workers can sustain. One is called a scheduled injury, and that deals with your arms, your legs, your hands, your feet, your toes, your extremities. The other is called a whole person injury, and that deals with your head, your neck, and your back, and or your torso, for the most part. What injured workers don't understand is that scheduled injuries are paid out differently than whole person injuries. Scheduled injuries are paid out less because there's a different formula that the statute, the legislature has enacted to pay to uh, compensate individuals. What people don't understand is that when they suffer injuries, th those injuries may very well result in physical impairment. That impairment dictates the compensation that the injured worker is entitled to. For instance, if you suffer a 10% impairment rating on your elbow, you'll get compensated anywhere between $5,200 and $5,300 for that 10%. However, depending on your average weekly wage that you were earning at the time of the injury, if you were to suffer a 10% impairment rating on your either on your head, your neck, or your back, that 10% could be worth anywhere between ten to fifty thousand dollars again depending on how much you were earning at the time of the injury so there's a big difference between scheduled injuries and whole person injuries what the injured worker doesn't know and what the what the carrier preys upon is that they encourage their their providers to focus more on the injuries that are on the schedule versus the whole person injuries because those injuries are paid out at a lesser rate. Also, unbeknownst to the injured worker, there are some there are some injuries that are thought of or automatically thought of by the carriers uh, to be on the schedule. For instance, if one suffers a injury on their shoulder, the carrier will automatically consider that as part of the schedule. And the reason why they do this is that the very first line on the schedule within the Workers' Compensation Act states loss of an arm at the shoulder. Well, they automatically assume that that is a scheduled injury if somebody suffers an injury to their shoulder. The problem is that that isn't normally the case. And in fact, more often than not, if you have an attorney, uh, a good attorney that is, they can convert that shoulder injury from a scheduled injury to a whole person injury, which ultimately will yield more compensation for the uh, injured worker. Again, the problem is that the injured, the injured workers uh, or the carrier will, will take advantage of the injured worker not knowing that the shoulder should not be considered part of the schedule of injuries and rather should be a whole person injury. Another example is the hip. When somebody gets an injury to the hip, once again, the carrier treats that as a scheduled injury when, when in many cases that shouldn't be the case. The bottom line is that the carrier, when it treats a whole person injury as though it's a scheduled injury, it is limiting the benefits that, are, that an injured worker is entitled to. Call us for a free consultation. Thank you.